You're watching World Sports Day on BBC World News, where it's now time to take a look at the British and Irish Lions tour in New Zealand. We're just hours away from the first test, with both sides looking to take an early scalp in the three-match series. The schedule on this tour is unrelenting, with warm-up matches, plenty of travelling, and, of course, mixing with the locals. But all the build-up is over, and now it comes down to the real deal, the test matches. We've been out and about interviewing former Lions and All Blacks to assess where this series could be won or lost for both teams. But first... Let's have a little look at the fixtures for the three tests. The first one is on Saturday morning at Eden Park in Auckland. Three days later, the Lions play Super Rugby side the Hurricanes before the second test on July the 1st being played in Wellington. And the third test moves back to Eden Park in Auckland on the 8th of July. Now let's head over now to our sports correspondent, Katie Gornall, who's following the British and Irish Lions on their tour of New Zealand and has been out and about looking at the accommodation issues for the fans and just how they've been overcome on this tour. Well, since we've been in New Zealand, we've seen thousands of Lions fans. And lots more are set to arrive ahead of the first test in Auckland. But there is one big problem. A lot of the hotels are sold out and many fans have been priced out of accommodation. So locals here have come up with their own solution. They've opened up their homes for free. <laughs> Mark and Danny have offered to host fans throughout the series. And we join them all for breakfast. We're young, so we're on a, like a real tight budget, I'd say, and just the ability to have somewhere to stay for the night and not have to break the bank for it just means we can have much better time. We thought we're going to need somewhere to stay. Came across this Facebook page, uh, Adopt a Line 2017, and there was just hundreds of offers from people basically giving up their homes. Uh, for us to stay in. Danny, Mark, you've opened up your home to Lions fans. What were you thinking? <laughs> well, <clears throat> these guys have you know, come a long way. At the end of the day, they're, they're guests in our country, so uh, it seemed like the right thing to do. And uh, it's been a lot of fun, actually. And turns out they're pretty good guys. <laughs> <laughs> I have kids in their 20s, and I would like to feel that they could find somewhere to stay and be made welcome if they needed that. Um, wherever they are in the world. Has there been a lot of rugby chatter around the house and who's going to end up with the bragging rights? The Lions tour is huge. You know, it's once every 12 years. Uh, it's the biggest event on the rugby calendar in this country. Um, so, yeah, there's been an awful lot of chatter about it. Um, I think a lot of people were pretty confident, um, but after the Canterbury game and the Māori game in particular, I think some of that uh, confidence might be, you know, a, a little shaky. I think it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. I mean, I've said from the outset, I think it's going to be a uh, 3 0. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to the Lions? It, uh, no, no, to the All Blacks. I hope oh. it's not. I really hope it's not. But I don't know. Uh, you know, if we win, it'll be amazing. It'll be, I think, a massive, incredible achievement because I, I think most people have written off the Lions. Yeah. Uh, Rory, are you going to make a case for the Lions here? Because yeah. you come all this oh, way no, and Alex says it's going to be a 3 0 whitewash. Yeah, no, um, I'm completely <laughs> the opposite. I don't think we'll win 3 0, but I really, I'm really, i confident we can um, edge a 2 1 series, which would be phenomenal. It's been quite touching how kind everyone's been to us, you know, the grounds on the fans and, and these guys, and it's been really brilliant. And I hope if, you know, Kiwis came to Britain, we'd give them the same welcome. And um, I think it's kind of the spirit of rugby. A time now to hear from a man who knows a thing or two about pulling on an All Blacks jumper. John Gallagher featured for New Zealand when they won the inaugural 1987 World Cup. And he thinks both fans and players alike will see this as a welcome change instead of preparation towards the 2019 World Cup. Because the Lions tour so infrequently to New Zealand, it's, it's once every 12 years. You know, the whole country comes out to support the Lions. And obviously the Lions, are, you know, they have fantastic support themselves, probably 25, 30,000 Brits going over to support them. So they, I think this is very much seen as a one-off, you know, so as far as World Cup preparation, they'll be, they won't be worrying about the 2019 World Cup at the moment, they'll just be thinking about beating the Lions. How important for both teams is it going to be to win that first test as far as winning this series goes? It's going to help, isn't it? You know, I think, uh, I think the Lions, if you go back to 93, I think 2005 was a bit of a mismatch, but in, back in 93, when the, when the Lions toured, uh, they, they narrowly lost the first test, and th yet they had a resounding victory in the second. So obviously, that could have been a 2-0 test uh, series win for the Lions. You know, so they're, they're still ruining that, that decision in the, in the last knock-ins of the first test in Christchurch. And so how hostile are they going to make it for the Lions when they go onto that pitch? 
Oh, very. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, I think, um, you know, the New Zealand public, they're going to be really welcoming of, uh, of all the tourists that are coming over, whether it be playing or, or just spectating. Um, but when the, when the whistle blows and the teams cross the white line, it's, it's a different kettle of fish, you know. So, uh, yeah, look, New Zealanders, you know, they, they love their rugby and they're passionate about it and, um, you know, they like to win. John, when the game does start, then where is this series going to be won and lost? Well, I think it's probably going to be a very, very even contest. You know, I think, uh, you know, if the Lions can put, a, you know, a fresh 15 on the pitch, you know, they've got strength everywhere. Obviously, losing Billy Vunapola so early, you know, even before the tour could get underway, you know, will put a bit of pressure on the other players. But, you know, to, to replace, you know, him, you know, with possibly Toby Falatau or CJ Stander, it's going to be, you know, you, you've got quality players here. So I think Gatlin's got, he's got a headache trying to pick his best 15. You know, so, um, but I think, you know, these players are hardened. A lot of these players know how to beat the All Blacks as well, especially in the case of Ireland. Now, you talk about the, the All Blacks, Dad. They just go from strength to strength. As we talked about earlier, they won the last two World Cups. But they got beaten by Ireland last year and they've got those 18 games in a row. But when you look at the players who are coming through, that just seems to keep on coming off the conveyor belt. Yeah, and it's, you know, there's such a high skill factor. Just looking at the, um, the Super Rugby this year, I mean, the skill level is so high, you know, and... Um, and the, you know, the five New Zealand franchises are sort of clear of, you know, the Australian and South African franchises as well. You know, so it's, um, you know, it's, it's all looking pretty good for New Zealand, but, you know, it's going to be in the grips of a New Zealand winter. It's going to be a tough one, you know, and I can't, I can't pick it. I'm really looking forward to watching it. Let's have a look at some of the figures concerning these tours and just compare and contrast what they could mean and what's happened previously. In 26, the amount of times the Lions have been beaten by the All Blacks in the 35 matches played. 1971, the year of the Lions' only series win coming in New Zealand. Five, that's the number of times the Lions have suffered series whitewashes in New Zealand. The last, of course, 12 years ago in 2005. 107. The Lions conceded that amount of points in the last series 12 years ago. In 1994, that was the All Blacks' last time they were beaten at Eden Park. And 91%, that's the win ratio of All Blacks coach Steve Hansen since he took over the coaching reins in 2011. Someone who featured on the last tour to New Zealand in 2005 was Mark Coeto. The former England winger played the final test of the series, which saw the Lions lose all three test matches. He thinks one of the most important things to do is accept how much rugby union means to the people of New Zealand and then embrace it. It's just huge, you know, there's nowhere, there's probably nowhere else like it in the world. Um, you know, it's a bit like being a, a footballer in Manchester, you know, where everybody knows who you are, everybody wants you to win. Um, you know, everybody, everybody lives there Monday to Friday for the, for the game at the weekend. And, you know, New Zealand uh, as, a, as a country is like that, you know, that they live and breathe. Um, rugby and, and I think from a from a Lions point of view it, it's even more unique because it only comes to the to the island once every 12 years so you know they they can't wait for for a Lions team to come touring and you know the, the memories of the, of the last one are, are going to be pretty good for for any of the locals that, you know winning a, a test series 3-0 so you know the, the the Kiwis are a funny breed you know they're they're some of the nicest people you could possibly meet on earth till they run out onto a rugby field and uh, till the All Blacks put that, that jersey on on a Saturday afternoon and, and suddenly the, you know, they all turn into absolute animals and you know, are, are dying for, for blood and stuff. So um, you know, the, the atmosphere over in New Zealand will, will be absolutely incredible. This New Zealand team are, are pretty special. They've won the last two World Cups. They're almost an, an invincible team. Ireland obviously beat them in Chicago last yeah. year and, and they're back on track now. But where do you beat a team like this? It's, I think it's I think it's difficult, you know. I think I think for more and more, you know, as the game continues to be professional, and I think for a Lions tour, it's getting harder and harder for for the Lions to to go away and, and you know and potentially be successful and, and, and bring a win back. But you know, how do you beat the All Blacks? Who, who knows? You know, it's 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 funny. I think when a Northern Hemisphere team go down to the Southern Hemisphere, we, we almost feel like we've, we've got to, you know, play rugby like, like the Southern Hemisphere boys play. And, you know, they are renowned for playing an open, you know, quick, high tempo game. And maybe Northern Hemisphere is known a little bit more for, for set piece, for field position, for, for defence. And, and I think for us, certainly at the minute, you know, and it showed from, 
from the weekend. Um, you know, I, I think we we don't we don't want to be afraid of, of sticking to that game plan. Um, you know, and not getting caught up in the in the hype and the and the you know the media wanting us to play this expansive game. I think certainly considering the weather conditions that that we'll be expecting and that we've seen so far in the in the series. You know, that that wet weather style of rugby, that set piece, scrum, run out, field position, taking the three points when it's on. You know. That is what we're good at, and I think that's what we've got to stick to. We've heard from former players, but what about the men who coach their respective squads in this series? Warren Gatland, himself a New Zealander, is looking to make it back-to-back -back wins in Lions Tours, having won in Australia four years ago. While Steve Hansen has many similarities to his compatriot, with both having coached Wales, but this is a series that has something a little more riding on it for both men. Players have worked incredibly hard and they've demonstrated, and, the, and their whole focus has been about... Um, improving from game to game and, and you know, arriving at the first test in pretty good shape. So but we're, we think we're in a healthy state, but we're under no illusion about how difficult the challenge is going to be on Saturday night against the best team in the world you know, with their record at home, and particularly in Eden Park since 1994. It's going to be a step up to anything that we, we have experienced. Rico's been the guy that's been in best form uh, throughout the year, played really well for the Blues when given opportunities. Not not the same uh, in the Maori game when he didn't get many opportunities. Um, so uh, he's got electrifying speed. And we just think that uh, for this particular match, he's the boy. So I guess the proof will be in the pudding. So there we have it. Similarities across the coaching staff, but New Zealand head into it as the heavily backed favourite. Such has been their form over the past six years or so. And it would take a brave person to back the Lions, but these tours are made famous for upsets which are built on a common goal. That is creating history. New Zealand are the world champions and now they face the ultimate test that comes just once every 12 years for them. And for all the latest, of course, head to the website bbc.com forward slash sport where we'll have full online coverage of the series and what promises to be something quite extraordinary. Until next time, from me, Tolson Toller and the team, it's bye for now.